there. I am in a partially reopened Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. This is my first ever visit to this national park, um, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic that is still ongoing, uh, most things still aren't open. You can kind of drive around the park, uh, look at some of the overlooks, but you can't take any tours to any of the cliff houses. But since I'm here, I decided I'd see what I can, so let's go. The main visitor center by the entrance is currently closed, so I'm skipping right over that. The main historic features and viewpoints of the park are way up atop a series of mesa tops. So there's a long scenic drive to get up there. Mesa Verde is one of the OG national parks, established in 1906 by Teddy Roosevelt. about to pass under the Moorfield Prater Tunnel, which was completed in 1957. This used to be the main park road back in 1911 called the Knife Edge Road. The auto trail, while very scenic, was very difficult to drive and maintain, so they built the current bypass road soon after, but it was kept open for decades before closing for good in 1957. This is Park Point, and from here there's a trail to a fire lookout tower, which is the highest point in Mesa Verde. The trail is two miles and there's a good chance it's not going to be open, so I'll hit it next time. This is the geologic overlook. That's Ute Mountain in the distance, which peaks just shy of 10,000 feet. Through this section of the park, the devastation of a wildfire is clearly visible. I have now made it to the historic heart of Mesa Verde, the Spruce Treehouse Overlook and the Administrative District. This here is the Chapin Mesa Archaeological Museum, one of the oldest national park museums which opened in 1925, and sadly it is closed due to COVID, that's disappointing. Mesa Verde is deservingly a UNESCO World Heritage Site, even though the United States has technically pulled out of UNESCO. This is the Stephen T. Mather plaque, which is at most national parks. Mather was the first director of the National Park Service and instrumental in the conservation of parks such as Mesa Verde. And the historic Mesa Verde administrative district here is a national historic landmark. The buildings here, including the museum, were constructed between 1921 and 1927 in the appropriate Pueblo Revival style. 
These are fantastic examples of National Park rustic architecture, and these buildings are still used for management of the park. That is the 1923 Park Headquarters building, and that is the original 1923 Mesa Verde Post Office, still in operation. This building once served as the Rangers Dormitory. The 1927 Community Building looms above the Spruce Treehouse Overlook. I bet there's a really good view from that balcony when it's open. And here is the first of the iconic cliff dwellings, Spruce Treehouse. It is the third largest of the cliff dwellings and is believed to have started construction in 1211 by the ancestral Puebloans. It contains about 130 rooms and would have been the home to about 80 people. That is incredible. It is one of the best preserved and most original cliff dwellings here at Mesa Verde and was among the first that was open to visitors well over a hundred years ago. There's the remains of some tiny dwellings or storage units within what appears to be a very narrow alcove. There's some cacti. It is my understanding that usually hiking down and exploring Spruce Treehouse is self-guided. However, the trail is closed right now. It states due to extreme fire conditions, may also be because of COVID. Well, that sucks. Now continuing around the Mesa Top Loop, this is the Navajo Canyon Overlook. The scenery of this park with its series of canyons is amazing and alone worth a visit. Looks like there's a cliff dwelling in that alcove way far away. From this angle of the canyon, the square tower house is visible below. This interesting alcove dwelling has been very difficult for even archaeologists to access. Probably wasn't too easy for the Puebloans who lived there either, but they managed to do it. The square tower of the house is very prominent. It looks to be four stories high. Wow. There's another smaller tower on this side, as well as some kivas. At this pull-off, we can view some pit houses and pueblos. These ruins actually have shelters built around them for preservation from the elements. Here are two overlapping pit houses. The first one was built around 675 and was destroyed by a fire, perhaps while the inhabitants were cooking. So a second one was built partially over the first one, with a ventilation system. This was the ventilation shaft of the second pit house. These pit houses were basically the homes of the first Puebloan people to arrive in this area, and they were usually subterranean circular structures. They would also be used for the storage of dried corn, and used for corn grinding, basket making, and other activities. This ruin is evidence of the first village at Mesa Verde starting around 850 CE when homes began to be constructed as above ground block shaped rooms with shared walls and separate storage pits. Now at the nearby Mesa Top sites, the remains of a Pueblo is visible outside and this connects with the ruins under the shelter. This Pueblo was begun around 900 and these people left around 1100 when the conditions up here became unfavorable. There were actually three separate villages built at this site over time. And the way you can tell which foundation is from which village is by looking at the way the masonry was constructed. This ceremonial kiva was built for the third village in about 1075, but the single row masonry wall in the middle is from the second village. Inside, the remains of the three villages built on top of each other continue. There's some original burnt poles, and that wall continues outside. 
This is the foundation of a tower built by the third village. Towers were a new architectural feature at that time and may have been used as a defensive structure or as a refuge. You can see a tower that's still standing here at Mesa Verde in my Far View Ruins video, which you should take a look at after this one. These aren't the unique cliff dwellings that Mesa Verde is so famous for, but still really fascinating pieces of history. This is the Sun Point view, with a wonderful panorama of Cliff Canyon. What's awesome about this overlook is that several cliff dwellings are visible from here. That is the Oak Tree House. Those are Anasazi ruins, built below and between the alcoves of the cliffs. And way over there is the largest of them all, the Cliff Palace. This is the type of place where a really good zoom lens would come in handy. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those right now, so this is the best I can do. Mesa Verde does hold one of the largest concentrations of cliff dwellings and archaeological sites in the country. And most of the cliff dwellings are unbelievably well preserved for being 800 years old. Like we saw at the pit houses and pueblos, the ancestral Puebloans lived up here atop the mesas for 600 years before the 1190s. But then they started moving down into the canyons and building the gigantic cliff dwellings within the alcoves of the overhanging cliffs. While they continued to farm up here atop the mesas, they primarily lived in the ever-expanding cliff dwellings for about 100 years. By the late 1270s, they started migrating south into New Mexico and Arizona, and by 1300, Mesa Verde was abandoned. Here's a closer view of the Oak Tree House, a good-sized dwelling with over 40 rooms. This is a pretty good viewpoint. You can see the plaza and kiva, and the extra storage rooms built in that ledge. This is the Fire Temple, a unique site because it was more of a formal and public site. The plaza there may have been used as a dance plaza or great kiva, and this space likely served as a sort of event venue for many of the surrounding communities of cliff dwellers, and even others from far outside Mesa Verde. This is the Sun Temple, another non-cliff dwelling Pueblo site, and since it's up here on the surface, we can explore it. Like the fire temple below, this was also more of a ceremonial location instead of a home and workplace. During excavations here, there was no evidence of roof beams or household items found anywhere. The Puebloans built rain gutters into the temple made out of stone, that's pretty interesting. This is a very sizable structure and is symmetrically planned in a D shape, and it's believed to have been left incomplete. These masonry walls are very well built. Back then they would have been a bit taller, between 11 and 14 feet high in some areas. Recently there have been some studies that the Sun Temple may have some features that align with the Sun and Moon at certain times of the year. For example, during the solstices, which the Puebloans likely observed with celebrations here 800 years ago. I also discovered an interesting observation that the complex appears to have been constructed using a common unit of measurement, a concept the Puebloans are not known to have been aware of. Here is an excellent view of the Cliff Palace. I think I'm going to head over there and get a closer look at the Cliff Palace next. Look at that! The Cliff Palace, the largest cliff dwelling of Mesa Verde and a true symbol of the American West. The palace contains about 150 rooms and 23 kivas. During its heyday, about 100 people lived in there. It is really hard to appreciate the magnitude of the masonry and even the doors of the Cliff Palace from here. Still, that is remarkable. Here I'm standing directly above the Cliff Palace. You'd have no idea it was down there. Visitors can actually go down there and go through the Cliff Palace, but it has to be on a guided tour. Unfortunately, the guided tours are not running right now due to COVID, so while that is disappointing, I will return when they start up again. Now let's look for some more cliff dwellings.
That is the Sunset House in Fuchs Canyon. Way across the canyon is the House of Many Windows. Some really intricate baskets and decorated pottery was found in there. Across this canyon is the Hemingway House. It is named for Mary Tilston Hemingway, who funded the first scientific archaeological expedition in the Southwest, which led to the preservation of Mesa Verde and other ancestral Pueblo sites. This is the pull-off for the Balcony House, one of the most famous features of the park, but it's actually not visible from this overlook since it's directly beneath here so they have these tiles depicting it. They also do guided tours for Balcony House, but obviously they're not running right now. Now I'm going to do the trail to the Soda Canyon Overlook. It's a short one, just a little over a mile there and back, so let's go. There's some really nice scenery along this trail. There's some cacti. There's a trailside pile of scat. If you know what animal left that, leave a comment in the comment section. And made it to the breathtaking Soda Canyon Overlook. From this overlook, the balcony house is visible, what looks to be a fantastic 13th century cliff dwelling village. Yep, I definitely want to do that tour. Even though the park was only partially opened, and I didn't even get to everything that was available, I am extremely impressed with Mesa Verde National Park. So awesome to finally explore this iconic park. Please like, subscribe, and check out my other National Park videos, including a separate video I made on the Farview Ruins here in Mesa Verde. And thanks for watching! Oh, and by the way, that's Ship Rock in New Mexico.